Hi, this is Heather Lockett, mm-hmm. and these are Lasting Conversations. I am in the studio today with a very, very dear old friend of mine, Joe Porter. Hi, Joe. Hello, Heather. Hello, hello. <laughs> I am so happy that you're here. And earlier today, we were at a, at a group at your venue called the Brewhouse Gallery, and it was a morning networking group, but that networking group... Um, Lake Park at business, business at breakfast, whatever it's really, really called. It's actually so much more than networking. It's family and people share from their hearts. And as we know, this is what this show is all about. And one of the things that some of us were sharing is the I don't know or the leaps of faith. And you, and as far as I've known you in 20, almost, well, 25, six, seven years, a long time, this is your go-to. It's not even your mantra. That's It's just who you are. You jump in, you jump in wholeheartedly. So you are the owner or co-owner of the Brew House Gallery in Lake Park, Florida, which is a music venue. It's an art venue, It, but it mostly it brings people together. And you started it nine years ago with your son, AJ. But we're going to start even before that because... Of your heart, and originally from Ohio, you have found your way doing extraordinary things. And <laughs> for those who are not on, on the camera, you're not owning that as of yet. And we're going to do that today. We're owning Joe Brogman Porter and the extraordinary things that you do because you bring help bring things to life, and including your son, A.J., who wouldn't be here had it not been for you. And so I could ask you where you might want to start. And maybe we will work backwards a little bit and we'll start with the brew house because it was born of necessity as your son is an artist and he's a quadriplegic artist. Mm -hmm. And so running the art circuits got exhausting, but really you wanted to create a space and you'll say him, but I know <laughs> that it was you too, um, where he could showcase his art and local artists could brew ideas and brew amazing things and brew coffee and now you brew beer. But you're brewing community and you're literally revitalizing a whole downtown, a little village of Lake Park, Florida. So start from you're in your kitchen of your old house that AJ lives in now. Mm -hmm. And here was this idea brewing. Walk us through that. To be honest with you, I was going to tell you that it is not my passion. Mm. AJ and making his life as quality as it could be Mm -hmm. is really the passion is what most of us do as moms. So when he... You know, like I say, we he graduated from high school, went to Digital Media Arts College, figured out that being in the wheelchair, he could work the computer really well. And so he learned how to create art on the computer digitally, which is, at that time, not something that a lot of artists did. Now it's, it's very common to see that going on. And so he said, Mom, I, I want to um, be an artist. I'm tired of just having to do the corporate stuff where you make the envelopes and the and the logos and designing and them, designing right. them, and 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 having to do what the customer wanted as opposed right. to what On he CAD wanted and, to do. Yeah, right. So he said, I I have figured a way to to do this, and so he he has created all of this art on the computer with literally one finger because mm-hmm. that's really all that he's he had at the time. And so we, I said, okay, let's go for it. And so we did. And there was a lot of times at home we would just sit and figure out how to do it. And we framed and I learned how to frame. We, he told me how to do everything. And it was, it was a community as well, though. So if it wasn't for a lot of my friends, we wouldn't, we would sit and, and, and make pieces up at night. So we went and we participated in, oh, Sunfest and... Uh, all of the art places, art shows. There, art shows that were around, and that Delray was one of the one of them that we did that was like a, a, a um, an end point for me when it was raining. It was so raining, and actually Martha was with me and helping me. And 
you get there so early and by the time you've got everything set up, you're really tired and the customers haven't even come there yet. So we did that for the longest time. I think about two years that we did that. And then AJ said, after we had been to Sunfest, said, you know what? When people you know, drink beer and have a good time out, they seem to appreciate art a little bit more. So that's when he decided he wanted to open an art gallery. An art gallery, he had some contacts that we'd made through the art business. And he said, you know, I want to have it. So it, originally, this crazy story that a lot of people don't know is that it was going to be called Paints and Pies. They were going to do pies. And then it figured out that, wait a minute, you know, I think I should sell beer and, and wine and sodas and make it a, a gathering place for where they could brew ideas, brew conversations, brew friends, brew coffee, brew beer. So we found a place in Lake Park that was affordable for us, which was really twice the amount of uh, square footage that we really needed. But we went in with both feet. And that was nine years ago in January of, of uh, 2014. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with the help of friends, um, his dad, uh, a lot of people that really knew what was going on, and, and AJ, really, he, he orchestrated the whole thing as far as the design. And so we opened that in May of 2014. Well, and that's just yeah. it. You had, there was this vision and he had a, a very, very yeah. clear vision and being in, in other communities in the the hometown where, um, how it landed finally in this little place called Lake Park that had had this main street called Park Avenue, but, um, that there was an opening to literally create an artist's area. So it was more than you're going to find the typical art studio place. Because I remember that you were kind of bumping into some closed doors, as a matter of fact, with yeah. the bureaucracy and the space and the cost, and you're going to do what? And everything led to this amazing venue that then has grown and grown. But keep on going, because it, it just, the whole story has morphed and blossomed yeah, and it was really quite by accident. I knew that we couldn't, we had a small place and, well, they, you can't sell art, you can't do this, you mm-hmm. can't do that. Mm-hmm. And so I just right. found this place. And a lot of people still to this day say, where's Lake Park? Right. And AJ even said, where's Lake Park? Well, I think we've done a pretty good job of at least letting people you know where You have put it on the map. <laughs> you, you have literally yeah. put that town on the yeah. map and it's a hundred years mm-hmm. old. Yeah. It's called Kelsey City. I would yeah. sort of vote bring it back to Kelsey City, mm-hmm. but it's just north of West Palm and south of Palm Beach Gardens and North Palm Beach. So it's it's sandwiched in, um, but it's over a hundred years old. So yeah. there's a long history there, but um, keep on going. Yeah. They're celebrating their hundredth year, hundredth yeah. anniversary this year. And so, so we did, you know, it, it ran, we ran it for a while, actually a couple years. And again, I had a lot of friends that were doing that. We did really well. And one of the concepts that AJ came up with is that we rent the wall space. And so if we rent the wall space, then that artist gets 100% of what they what they sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, are, they have confidence in themselves. They have their own openings. Uh, we help them with some uh, artist openings and stuff. They come in and they talk a little bit about their art. So you were changing even the concept of what art galleries right. usually do by having the artist, whether well-known or beginners, basically rent a square of real estate. So that helps offset rent and your costs. But then you're not getting into commissions. You're not getting into... It's their sale, period. It is their sale. Yeah. And typically in an art gallery, they, number one, will take a percentage up to 50%. And number two, they won't let the person put any kind of information out on where how to get in touch with them if they're not oh. even in. And we don't do that. We yeah. will highlight them whenever they come in and we sell their artwork for them and we pay, they pay the tech, customer pays the taxes. And then at the end of the month, we give them a check and it's very rewarding very rewarding for him. And so AJ still has a a few of his pieces there and we ask him to stay for three months because it takes a little bit of time to hang everything. And so, and then if somebody comes in and said, oh man, I I was really wanting that piece of art. We keep there and we refer and say, here, call them up. So it worked out really well and it's still working to this day. So we're still in art gallery. And two years ago, right in the middle of the pandemic, we decided to open a, a craft beer bar. And one of the guys who was AJ's Boy Scout leader early on, John, he was a home brewer for years. And we approached him and said, would you brew beer for us? And so now we're a little three-barrel system that 
does not distribute. You've got to come to Brew House to get it. And it's called Kelsey City Brewing Company, named after Kelsey City. A lot of the beers that we have are named after Kelsey City and anything that was there that at the time that it was being created 100 years ago. Right, yeah. right. So it's it's such a fun little spot. Mm-hmm. And um, the music and the musicians that come out are extraordinary. Some occasionally on an open mic night, there are some beginners just doing their thing. But who walks in the door, I think our, all of us would, our ears would just peel back because they've had this these rich histories and they want to just still come and... Mm-hmm and play and do their thing and jam and wail. And it's just places like yours, and I'm about to go to Nashville. You're about to go yeah, up to right. that national area for your parents' 80th uh, wedding anniversary. Where there are musicians, there's fun and there's history and there's creativity and life. Absolutely. And life. Yeah. So let's go to that. So you have... An older son, Skip, who has uh, children, and then you yeah. have AJ, who's Adam Jr. Or, mm-hmm. And so, when you're talking about AJ and the Boy Scouts and of this and this, the context of that is part of what is this storyline. And as a mom, you were just Mama Bear, and you literally have kept him alive by you've been a nurse and by training, mm-hmm. and so. Where doctors had said, eh, so sorry, but there's really only a few years. Now he's in his 30s and he's a dad. But tell us about those days and where your fortitude came from that literally you'd have to physically, you know, bang on his back or do the massage Mm -hmm. or keep up medically because this has been very, very serious. That said, all the while you're living life. So he's did roller hockey. There's a video of the roller hockey, mm-hmm. which is amazing. <laughs> there's the the Boy Scouts. There's the clubs. There, the speaking engagements, the mentoring of other kids. So that fortitude, where did all that come from? It came from AJ, really. I mean, he was he's always been an old soul. Mm-hmm. Um, he was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy. It had never been on our family at all. It's one of those autosomal recessive. It's just one in 18 people in a room are going to have it, and he just ended up getting it. He got two bad genes, and we were shocked that he had it. He just stopped meeting motor milestones. And it was like, well, okay, now what do we do? And he would sit and just watch people, and I think that he just became a different kind of kid that was not up and running around. And so we put him in school. He was smart. He was in a wheelchair by the time he was two years old, and he's been in that because he would learn how to drive the thing. We would put him on a, um, a little big wheel, and we put his shoes in there, and we stapled or nailed his shoes to there to keep his exercising and stuff. And then he learned how to, to work that big wheel. So for wheel. a while, could he, could he motor his legs, he would his do little a, legs? He would do a little bit. There right. was a little, uh, little tyke's truck or a horse and he would he would kind of move along a oh, little adorable. bit on that but but really not he never did bear weight on his legs and stuff so and then around around two a little bit after that he ended up getting RSV which is really common mm-hmm. and we thought we were going to lose him at that time he was at St. Mary's there was a doctor there that actually uh, saved him and it's a respiratory it's a respiratory mm-hmm. and then from then on there were some times where I think there was like six pneumonias in a year and we ended up he had scoliosis, and we went over to, when he was 13 years old, he went over to the Shriners, and the Shriners stabilized his back, so he's got a rod in his back. So thank goodness the Shriners helped, because he's been really, really good since then. And we have little bouts of stuff, you know, he doesn't cough very well, he doesn't have a lot of, of oomph to, to get it out, so we do very cautiously watch him whenever he gets a cold or anything. But he was just driven. Um, he said... Early on, when he was in camp, Mom, I, I think I could I think I could work at the pool. And it's like, okay, AJ, how are you going to work at the pool? He said, I can be the deck monitor. I can tell them, you know, that they need to stop running. You and blow all a whistle and, and blow a whistle. Yeah. So that's one of the first things he did. And then after that, he'd gone to a camp thing, and that's when he ended up watching them do roller hockey and stuff. And he said, you know, Mom, I came home. I can, I can be I can play hockey. And it's like, AJ, how are you going to play hockey? <laughs> 
<laughs> and he said, I can be the goalie. And so we talked one of the guys that was running the Palm Beach Gardens hockey link into letting him play hockey. And we got him all fixed up with some stuff. And by the second year that he was playing, he was one of the first ones they wanted because the kids couldn't figure out how to (laughs) put the puck up over because we had a little barrier at the bottom where the wheelchair was. And they had a really hard time getting it into the the net. It's so so funny. It's hilarious, too. It's hilarious yeah. and it's joyful and um, Yankee ingenuity <laughs> yeah. to build yeah. this thing. Because also thinking back to that time frame, there really wasn't a lot for handicap access, mm-hmm. ramps, um, let alone sports, going to a beach. None of that was even available. Having having wheelchairs have the bigger wheels to do these things so that you were, you were also part of a family that were pioneering to put forward what is the can-do. What yes. is the can-do? And of course, we're going to play some sports. Well, let's figure this out. And so, <laughs> um, is that on YouTube or was that a personal thing? Or somewhere on Facebook of AJ with the City of Palm Beach Gardens playing playing um, goalie with, mm-hmm. with his rig. It was just because the motorized, yeah. using the motorized in his finger... To motorize the yep. chair. Yeah, it was a documentary that they ended up doing right. because it was kind of, uh, you know, not a lot of kids had done that. There had been kids playing baseball and stuff with the assistants, but they just, you know, unfortunately, the the town was willing to go ahead and go with it. And you know, you always worry about insurances and people kind of getting your way to to make it not happen. And you know, if I look back. Um, you know, as a, as a mom, you, you just don't say no, you know, you try to do whatever you can to, to keep things going and you have to. And when you, when your back is against the wall and you don't really have a choice, but to go forward, that's, that's pretty much what you do. And so to this day, AJ has called me his successive enabler. That's, I've heard him say that in speeches. That's it how he gets me every me. time. My, yeah. You are the success enabler. Only because I kept saying yes and didn't say no to any of the things most of the time. Yeah. So, but you yeah. know, you realize how it, important that is, Joe. And this is going to be great for the, for the show and for a lot of people to hear because there are many of us that didn't come from that message. No was always the message, mm-hmm. and cannot was the mantra. True. So, you have flipped that very notion to say, well. There is no sky. Forget sky's the limit. There is even, not even sky. Yep. Right? And to the point where he was, he's so goal-oriented. And mm-hmm. I wish that there were a lot of other kids that, that, there were, that were that way. But mm-hmm. he, he's driven, like you say, he's, he knew he wanted to be a dad. And he's a dad. <laughs> and he loves it. So, well, so you mom's know, left so, doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's really great. So he found love and love found him. And, and he's a stepdad. And... Through modern medicine and technology and a lot of prayers and angels. Yep. He is an earth angel. Oh, he's great. totally yeah. an earth angel. And now he, he's a dad of a, of a beautiful daughter. And never thought he was ever going to have to have that. He never thought, you know, and I think that's why he kind of threw himself always into what he was doing. And then, right. and then he, he met Stephanie and, and things totally turned around for him. And it's just been a great life for him. I think if there's anybody that could say, you know, when when we look at each other and we live each day, I think that that's probably the biggest lesson that I've learned from him is that you really do need to live each day because you just don't get tomorrow. And he has just done so much that when if they're, you know, I don't think any of us are getting out of here alive. So live each day. Live each day. <laughs> and did you have those moments where, and I've known you enough mm-hmm. to know that he, he has had ebbs and flows physically and emotionally, and the two of you, you know, has not been easy raising uh, a wheelchair-bound person. And the, the lifting and the showering and the bathing, it's, it takes a lot. And, um, but did you have those moments where you weren't sure if there was a tomorrow with this young guy? Many times, really, when he'd be in the hospital. And even for me, mm-hmm. um, 
Because how was your own health in well, all of this when, too? Yeah, I mean, and there was a lot. Owning a business is a big responsibility. And right. then when we had purchased the or we rented the brew house, um, then soon after that, the the owner Sue Ellen Mosler, who owned the building, uh, put the building up for sale. Mm-hmm. And we had done a really good job, I think, with uh, music. AJ had some really good connections. We were in the music and and the musicians loved it. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, what happens if we just run the Kelsey Theater and make it? There's a, a theater, and then there's, there's a, a whole block full of nifty <laughs> little stores, storefronts. Mm-hmm. So you took yeah. on being... Yep. Took uh, on being a landlord. A mogul. <laughs> <laughs> a real estate mogul. That's yeah. where I thought I was going to lose it. Because yeah. that was, that was, it was a lot of work. We were there a lot at night. We were also running brew house. We were landlords for all the tenants and AJ was really instrumental in actually getting a lot of the tenants that are in there now and they're still 100% rented right now mm-hmm. other than the Kelsey Kelsey right now after COVID it got shut down because they wouldn't let anybody in with theaters and yeah. so we closed that, that took down a big but hit, yeah. it took a big hit yeah but yeah. it worked out okay because it was I was getting to if Stephanie wouldn't come along I don't know how things would have turned out though it was really a lot it, it gets it gets exhausting. And again, for families who are walking this walk, do you have um, pearls or nuggets for them while they're on this journey or they've received a diagnosis somehow? I would just say, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a blow, but you just keep moving forward. Um, you don't have a choice but to keep moving forward and you really should try to do the best that you can for your kid because they're here or any individual that hap- that happened to them. You just, you live day to day and try to look at it as as, a, as much positive as you can and let them live. Well, and speaking of which, I've, he has, and you have gone with him, um, public engagement, speaking engagements. There's a portrait of the Obama family that has been at the White House. And so he's made national news. You have made national news and so when we're saying, you know, the dark hours when you're not feeling well or you're feeling a little bit lost, also, my God, blossom into these extraordinary mm-hmm. and well-recognized, uh, just for the art itself, not, not art well because he's a guy in a wheelchair. This is, these are what the abilities are. And so many of my guests have worked with folks with neurological differences or other, or depressive issues or whatever. And we're all really talking about, yeah, but what's behind that to let that shine, shine forward. And so AJ has, is an accomplished public speaker. I think he's having a hard time now getting, getting, um, with mobility and things, but tell us some of those stories as a matter of fact, like how do you get to have a painting at the, in the, New York Times front page of the art section and it's going to the White House. <laughs> I mean, again, you shoot for the stars. Yeah. <laughs> you said, "Mom, if there how am I going to get recognition? What would I do?" Well, if I could make a portrait for the president, that would probably get something going. And so we had a person that was involved with a political committee that could get us in front of someone that would get us an interview or at least to get a meeting with uh, President Obama. And so he made a portrait of the first family with the dog that they had just gotten. And so in Delray, when he was at the tennis center, we had an opportunity to meet him. And he presented him with this huge, I think it was like 24 by 36 piece of artwork that had the first family on it. And we have a signed little promo of it that he signed for us. But they told us that, well, I don't know whether it's not going to get back to the White House because we don't put a lot of things on Air Force One. We don't know whether or not they're, you know, they have to be inspected. And that Sunday after we saw it come off of Air Force One um, and it made it to the to the New York Times, but most photographed things in, in the year or something That's right. like and that. The, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Not only did it make it for that Sunday paper, but... For the year's recap. Yeah. Was and cool. now we're at the goosebumps part of the show. <laughs> I love that it. That was pretty cool. That's spectacular. Yeah. The other thing he has, if you go to Palm Beach Gardens uh, in their um, chambers, their commission chambers, he created the tree. Mm-hmm. And there's like a, oh gosh, it took 
it was a big thing. Like it fills a whole wall, like ten foot by eight foot. The big banyan like that, that represents banyan tree. Trumpet Garden. That's exactly yeah. right. Right. So they they commissioned him to do it, and he put it in there. So I think it's still there to this day. Yeah. So yeah. everybody who can yeah. watch online or, or see it. So I'm going to go to I'm going to switch gears and go to motorcycles because mm-hmm. we're talking about AJ and his passion, but you have your own. And so when you just hit the road and put wind in your hair, I want to hear about your ride. <laughs> it's great. I've been riding since 05. There was a neighbor that just got me into it. And that was my release because I ended up having some break from AJ when I first was on my own and not with his dad anymore. And it's like, well, I've always wanted to do that. And so since 05, I've been riding a motorcycle. And I still, to this day, love getting away because I really can just forget all about it. So um, work, you just are more focused on having a good time, watching the road, making sure that nobody gets in front of you, that you don't want in there. And so it's a it's a good release. to, And it's something I really enjoy doing with my husband. Well, and that you can you drive around the back roads. So yeah. there's some countryside and you find the little beer halls and honky tonks and fishing po- points yeah. and meet some amazing people. It, it, amazing people. We've actually took the auto train and went up to and took took the coast all the way down one year. One of these days there's going to be a little bit more of that. So That's great. Yeah. That's great. Well, and you you are remarried to this extraordinary man named Millard yeah. and the two of you were just over in Ireland and and enjoying your own fruits, right? Yep. You're trying to make that blend be part of your time. Like you have been a busy woman for a very, very long time. Yep. And now to have fresh love and exploration and your parents who are whip smart mm-hmm. and and I can probably guess where you get your tenacity oh. because they are how old as if they've been together Married for 80 years. Actually, 70 years. Oh, 70. 70 years. 70. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're in there. Otherwise, they hadn't got married as kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, dad's 92 and mom will be soon be 90. Wow. Yeah. That's really, yeah. really, really beautiful. Yeah. And so your, um, your brew house, what is it that you see brewing right now? Do you really want to know? <laughs> you share what you like or don't, and that's okay too. That's okay too. Um, yeah, it's been because there are helpers out there. Yeah, so if, and you, it's if been there's something years, you'd really, really like would, to say, I would really love to find somebody with some new energy, kind of had the same kind of passion that AJ had, give an opportunity to some other people to come in and run a business, get creative with it. Like I say, it's it. I'll be. I'm soon to be 70. So I think it's about time. I was a pharmacist. I was a nurse. I was a pharmaceutical rep. I've now been a business owner. I think it's time to pass it on to somebody else. And I'd love to find somebody that would uh, take it over. We'd even help them. We'd even help them. Well, I know you would. And there'd be a huge community of people (laughs) saying, you know, it's going to feel right, right? (laughs) You're not going to, you're not going to robot the place. Um, And there is a huge opportunity for someone to see the big vision of that whole block and the theater itself and and the kismet. There's always been this beautiful, and I say this word often, but this kismet and synergy with the people that can come in there. And there's really all age ranges. And whether you're single or not, you just are comfortable to come in and listen to some good music, have some coffee, have a root beer float, or have some of the best local micro brews ever. And um, it's a delightful spot. And, and the town is changing. But within that, yes, you get to have your fun. Right. And yep. I've seen you, you, you do have fun. You know how to kick it up. <laughs> you do. But if, if another chapter is now time for you to pass the baton, I can see that. I think it is. To the next right person or group, to the next right group. Absolutely. And um, I think with that, I want to play music. I don't have any, but I hear music in my head. <laughs> and maybe we'll patch something in. But while, while we're here, um, 
I think just round back to AJ for a second and the whole muscular dystrophy because he, you were all very involved with various charitable groups. Oh, and the service dogs, mm-hmm. the best friends. So if you want to speak to some folks about that piece of it in terms of support and where people can find support and whether it's having your dog help mm-hmm. or pets, um, and I could even ask you if you have thoughts on people who have pretend pets versus, no, seriously, don't park in the parking <laughs> handicap spot if you're not really handicapped. I've seen you go off on that. Oh, I have. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but so the different organizations, how people might want to get involved, where are the helpers to help the families? Well, AJ was involved with muscular dystrophy early on. We were on the telethon when Channel 12 did the telethon for the longest time. He was an ambassador at one point in time, at early on when he was small. He's always, always been involved in something that, he, whether it be, you know, he he went to Alamanda Elementary School and he was one of the first kids that was there that was mainstreamed. And that was something that they really didn't do at that time. But we we championed to make sure that he was not pigeonholed into a place where he couldn't totally express himself and learn and they provided an aid it was it was wonderful the the public school system has been great to for special needs kids for sure and then we were involved with muscular dystrophy we were involved with canine companions for independence so he ended and let me say I already talked about the Shriners and the Shriners the Shriners are actually the ones that diagnosed him, which was really crazy. Wow. Okay. It was a Shriner physician that we did because really? did, we really didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And then they referred us to muscular dystrophy and the the Miami people confirmed it. But um, he AJ said I'd like like to have a service dog because then that way people would come up to him and it really does make a difference if a kid is in a wheelchair or has a special need other autistic, you know they provide they provide hearing dogs they provide helper dogs they provide um, just a lot of different things. There was a girl in our class that was a speech therapist and so the dog helped these kids learn how to speak and stuff and she would use it as part of the curriculum. So we were able to get two service dogs from Canine Companions for Independence, and they have since passed on, but they were terrific, and I highly recommend that organization to really break the ice for kids to be able to have the dog with them at school. We didn't end up taking Larry or Dre a lot of times to school because he had an aide. That was going to be another thing for the aide to take care of. Mm-hmm. But but when we were in situations, he did take the dog down to college with him, and it would learn how it knew how to open. They knew how to open doors. They knew how to go pick up things for him. And I think most of all, at one point in time, whenever I was across the room from him at night, the dog would come and get me. Both of them learned to come and get me. Then he, AJ would wake up and say, you know, Dre, go get mom. And next thing I know, there's a little dog at the bed by me. So I knew that it was time to get up if I didn't hear him. So those are some things that are really, really helpful. And I think, you know, just using your community, get out there in the community and schools have been great. Um, I think that'd be it really. Good. Anything else. That's good. And just tell people to keep on going. Keep on going. And fly, and there is no limit. Yeah, I mean, I've questioned myself a lot of times. It's like, well, what am I going to do? I mean, you really, it, you, you feel sometimes stuck, but once you pass over that stuck part, everything seems to open up again. So I think That's everybody right. kind of feels that. There's a little bit of a hesitation, and you feel like, oh, and then once you do it, things get better. It sure does, yeah. and things get better. <laughs> Because the horizon is vast. Joe Porter, thank you, thank you for being here. Thanks, Heather. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Please be sure to like, follow, review, and share this podcast. And if you would like to be part of the conversations, send emails to podcasts at lastingconversations.com and find us on Facebook at Lasting Conversations. This is Lasting Conversations. We get to the heart of everything. 